Hey team, so here we're going to talk about how to tell whether there are up to or more than five times the amount of buyers versus sellers or up to five times the amount of sellers versus buyers using this indicator over here called the counters ratio. This is going to be super interesting. It's also going to be the final video we do in this mini series of the tensor charts platform. Now, of course, there will be other videos in the future where we talk about the tensor charts platform or trading strategies. I know that you've left comments asking for trading strategies in particular. So we'll cover that too. But right now, I just want to talk about the counters ratio. What is it? How to put it up? How to use it? How to read it in terms of the context of the market? So let's roll intro and talk about how to use the counters ratio. So we're going to talk about how to see how many more buyers there are than sellers or sellers that there are compared to buyers. And we're looking at this from a historical point of view. So not in terms of the order book right now, but in terms of the trades that have actually happened. And to do that, we need this trades counter area that we've spoken about in a previous video. But because I'm on the one hour chart here for Bitcoin to the dollar, I want to select 60 minutes. It doesn't really matter the size I put over here, but I want to select 60 minutes for the counter ratio. And I'm going to click this little chart icon over here. Now, what I can see is this bubble over here, this big green bubble. And this tells me that there were five or more times buyers than sellers. And down here, I can see where there's a lot of strong selling. If I zoom out, you can see how these bubbles can be quite useful because you can actually see if there's a lot more buying compared to selling, etc. Now, you don't want to look at that on its own. You want to look at it compared to price. And you also want to look at it in terms of what market are we in? Are we in an uptrend bull run? Are we in a downtrend bear market? Or are we in a ranging trading market right now? And so you really want to use this more for context than just to place a trading decision. Now, one thing I should say is if you don't know what the counters ratio is, what do I mean by having, you know, three to five times more buyers than sellers? Definitely go back and watch all the videos you can on this channel that are labeled order book and you will learn exactly what the counters ratio is because you want to have that fundamental understanding of how the order book works and when an aggressive buy or seller comes in how that actually adds to the counters ratio but really what we're talking about is a way of consolidating information on the tape here i call this the tape the trading history the tape and charting it in a way that is easy to understand and see so what i want to do is just scroll along i haven't really prepared for this video and look for something that stands out to me okay here Here's a good example of where the trades counter can be very, very useful. Again, it's just used for context of what's happening in the market and have we exhausted buyers or sellers. Now, you can see here that volume is very, very low. Price had dropped quite dramatically over here. It went from 4,200 down to about 3,900 Bitcoin to the dollar. And what I can see happened here is price went up a little bit, but I had quite a bit of selling compared to buying happening here and here. But actually, it didn't move price very much. So volume was very, very, very low. And I had a lot more selling going on. If I just look at this in general down here, a lot more sell off going on compared to buying. And of course, what happened is price trended upwards. Now, could you have used this to decide when to enter and when to exit a trade? Not really. Like I prefer the counters ratio. I think it's more useful when you're in something like a bull market or an uptrend and you can see that there's a lot of buying going on, you know, right at the top volumes going down. And therefore, have you exhausted all your buyers and are you getting into short at the very top of a market? That's one example. The other example is in a bear market, you know, like, are we seeing a lot of selling going on? So you can see over here, we saw a lot of selling going on here, a lot of volume happening. So this is interesting. A lot of volume happened here, a lot of sell volume. We had, uh, what was this? This was 4.5 times more sellers than buyers right over here. That's what we had. And we saw volume actually going down. So the amount traded, and this was all sell volume, really, the amount traded actually dropped a bit. Price continued to drop a little bit. The order book got a lot more thin over here. So we saw a lot more consolidation happening. But really, this tells me that this downtrend has come to an end. Like we've exhausted a lot of sellers over here. We haven't had much more volume come into the market. So I'm really looking at the first two or three bars over here to try and gauge what happened with the trend in total volume. Are they buyers or sellers? And for me, they were all sellers. They were really all sellers. I mean, look at the volume. Uh, if you don't know, I've got the opacity turned up here on the candlestick chart. When I turn that up, I can actually see the volume inside the candlestick. So I can see a lot of sell volume there and there. I can see the total volume went down. 
I can see the counters ratio also started trending in the opposite direction as well. So there's like a divergence going on here. And again, this tells me we've exhausted a lot of sellers. Now this can be useful because let's say you're trading options or even just spread betting this and you want to say, hey, you know, I'm going to bet that within the next 12 hours that Bitcoin is going to be higher than this price then you, you'd probably be right because you know that we're entering a period of consolidation and that this momentum has died right down. You can see here, we had some momentum and then all of a sudden it dropped off and volume went down because we had exhausted all these sellers here. So this counters ratio is very, very useful for context. I mean, here is another interesting example. We didn't even have a very high counters ratio because we had buyers coming in over here. You can see in this candle where we had this drop we actually had buy volume in here and it dropped quite a lot, telling me that the order book, again, was probably quite thin because look at the, the level of volume here. It's like negligible, it's nothing. All of a sudden we had some sell volume come in, but the counters ratio is more like two times the amount of sellers to buyers. So it's not even that extreme. Then we had a lot of buy volume over here. So, well, not a lot of volume, actually low volume, but a high buyers counters ratio happened over here. Not much happened with price. Like I would not have placed the trade here. I just wouldn't, this wouldn't have told me. I mean, let's get rid of this for a second. How would I have known to go long here? I really wouldn't, I can't see any indicator, but this is where it gets interesting because my counters ratio is fairly low. Price has gone right up. My guess is that we're not gonna go much higher. Like we've hit a ceiling, we've hit a resistance. So if you wanna short for some short term pips, just a few pips over here, this could be a good time because you've got a resistance level over here to put your stop loss. Uh, and you can see not much action has happened over there. So that's what happened anyway, it went down. Um, and then what happened over here? Was there any signal on the counters ratio? No, not really. But this is how you can use the counters ratio. You can literally use it for context of what happened. Like here, this is interesting to me, price going up, the counters ratio staying strong. You know, have we just sold off everything? Are the sellers losing the battle over here? And again, you need to understand it based on the context in the market. Same thing over here, a lot of selling, just a lot of selling going off and then bang, because price really didn't go down much more. And we did actually have some decent volume here as well. I mean, for me, the counters ratio is a lot more useful when there's more volume. Like here, there's a lot of sell volume and a huge. I mean, what was this? This was five, five plus more sellers than buyers going on over here. And yet we had this massive spike up. In fact, if I drill into this, get rid of that bar, here's this big counters ratio. But guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened with price. And we've got this bullish trend over here. We can see this consolidation. Who's winning between the bulls and the bears? Well, we don't know yet. But all of a sudden, what happened? Some good news or whatever came in. A lot of buy volume came in. So anyway, that's it. That's how I'm looking at the counters ratio in a ranging market. It's just telling me how many more buyers were there than sellers, you know, to what level? Because right now I can see the bright greens and reds on the delta in the bar, but this gives me that extra piece of information that, there, hey, there was a lot more buying going on than you think over here, or hey, there was a lot more selling going on than you think over here. So I'm sure there's more clever ways you can think to use this counters ratio. Use your instinct, use your intuition, read the market. And I look over here at say over 150 Bitcoin, I can see that you know there's some good resistance as well on the sell side and also some good support here on the buy side on the bid over here as well. So when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking we're really in a pretty strong channel right now. I would be using this as an indicator for me to scalp. I'd be looking for support right around here, but I could use the support and resistance based on volume to decide where that support and resistance is. And I'd be looking at resistance over here. I wouldn't be looking to go drastically short or long based on what all these signals are telling me. So that's how I'm looking at using the trades counter with everything together to figure out whether this trade is right for me. Now, I hope you found this video series on the Tensor Charts platform useful. Again, I'm not putting a link here. I don't wanna get paid for promoting this platform. If you guys like this, if you want more videos like this, if you are keen on the strategies, tell me what sort of strategies you're looking for. Are you day trading? Are you looking for shorting strategies, going long? Are you looking for technical analysis? What is it that you would find useful? Just put it in the comments and I'll make sure that if I have some value I can add, that I will. So I hope you found this useful. Give it a thumbs up, give it a comment if you enjoyed the series. Thanks for watching and as always, take care and talk soon.